What's good people, it's Kay, and I've been procrastinating on this one for a long time now. Uh, let's just say that a lot happened between my planning this video and actually getting to shoot it. In the beginnings of this channel, I've been thinking a lot about what I want to do with it. Reactions, discussions, we already have those. I'm looking at introducing new series on that front, aside from Ruby. I'm close to getting a PC upgrade, and once that happens, I'll be experimenting with Let's Plays as well as opening up a stream on Twitch. But another thing I want this channel to be is a chronicle of my transition, and you can consider this video the first episode of that series. In my last Ruby reaction video, which was Volume 8, Chapter 7, I revealed that I'm trans. I hadn't planned on revealing it at that point, but I also hadn't expected May to talk about it in that episode. And seeing that, it just felt natural and comfortable for me to share a bit about myself. I didn't say much about it either because I didn't want to take away from my analysis of the episode, so I mainly just kept it to stuff that I could relate back to her. I'll start with a bit of background. My story isn't the typical one. I didn't start questioning until I was about 16, 17, but once it started, it was like a snowball rolling down Everest. You know, everything just changed. This is actually my second crack at transitioning. I came close to starting hormone therapy back in early 2016. I was 18 at the time, but there were some issues and I had to back away from it all. Sorry, but I can't really go into the details of it. What followed though was years of blankness years of just letting it slide. Those years, all that time between May 2016 and December of 2019, costed me quite a bit emotionally and mentally. I basically isolated myself from everything and everyone, but I never forgot about my transition, and I never gave up on it. I just needed a spark. Which brings me to the end of 2019, right around the new year, really sucky circumstances. Once again, I can't really go too much into it, but they're the kind of circumstances that remind you that life is too uncertain to be left wondering about what could have been. I realized that if something is within your power, then there's really no reason why you shouldn't reach for it. I also realized that there was no benefit to me sitting around feeling sorry for myself for yet another year. I needed to get moving, and 2020 was the year for it. As far as New Year's resolutions go, it's pretty bold. And it's also ironic, right? The year everything stopped was going to be the year I started moving again. Of course, at the time, I didn't know that everything was going to stop, and it actually did end up messing with my plans. As much as I was determined to make sure 2020 wasn't trash on a personal level, I wasn't actually able to do anything until the middle of the year, which was when I was able to go back to the therapist and get it all started. You may or may not be aware, but here in Western Australia, the process requires a handful of therapist appointments paired with GP consultations. Once they're both sat satisfied with where you're at mentally and you've had the proper blood tests, you can be prescribed for HRT meds. And so, here we sit today. I've been taking the medication for well over a month at this point, and so I thought I would also use this video to mark some of the things I've noticed so far. Of course, it takes a few months at least for HRT to cause anything truly remarkable, but that doesn't mean that nothing has happened so far. First, since starting HRT, my libido is is non-existent, and that doesn't bother me so far, mainly because I've never been someone who places a high priority on sex, like I've never seen it as the most important part of a relationship, but it certainly bears monitoring going forward. I could imagine someone else, someone who might have more interest in it, you know, I could see that person really struggling with a change like this, so I don't mean to sound flippant, it's just that my circumstance doesn't make it particularly challenging. Another thing I've noticed is chest growth. Not significant, but believe me when I say it's noticeable. Obviously, you read going in that that's one of the first things to start in the process, but I wasn't expecting it to start, like, in the first two weeks, so I do take great interest moving forward. One thing I wasn't prepared for was for my sleep to be so affected. Since starting HRT, and more specifically in the past few weeks, I'd say anywhere from 60 to 120 minutes has been shaved from my sleep cycle. As in, I'm going to sleep at the same times, but I'm waking up much earlier than I'm used to, completely unable to go back to sleep. Combine that with me being on intermittent fasting, and there have been a couple of running on fumes days in that time frame. It's pretty well known by people involved 
involved and around the process that the effect of testosterone blockers can be a bit intense. One of the main side effects I heard over and over again was mood swings. Mood swings and depressive episodes. I haven't had that so far. In fact, this past month, I've been pretty fucking happy. Certainly happier than any time during my long hiatus. Happier than much of 2020. Now, I've never been diagnosed with depression, and I can't say that I was ever depressed during those years, and it's unfair on people actually suffering from depression to suggest as much. But I certainly wasn't feeling good about a whole lot during those years. It was just a sucky time in which so many days blended together, and I was just trying to push through a grey nothingness that had no foreseeable end. I'll never call it depression, but I will say it was pretty shit. So the fact that I've been so happy lately is a little scary to be honest. I'm busier than ever at my day job, my money situation is weak, my appetite has been slashed, and I'm losing a ton of energy from sleep and fasting. But I still feel great. Does that mean that when I crash it's going to be real bad? Probably, but that's no reason to not enjoy how I'm feeling at this moment in time. Speaking of which, the last thing I want to touch on. A few weeks ago I experienced what I'm calling a RWM, a random weepy moment. I started crying uncontrollably out of nowhere. Some context. Over the past however many years, I've been a more emotional person. I get invested in stories and arcs. Emotional investment is part of my process, you know, it's a writer thing for me. But when I have emotional reactions to certain things, it's because I feel like it's appropriate. When I cry watching the Doctor regenerate in Doctor Who, or watching the end of Book 3 of Legend of Korra, those are moments that make sense for me to cry. You know, those are moments where the progression from emotion to crying is natural and appropriate. Everything is in sync. But this random moment, me sitting there working while I had some sport on in the background. This was not one of those moments where it made sense for me to cry. I was just crying, and the whole time I was sitting there thinking, why the fuck am I crying? Because it just didn't fit. My emotions had not been moved to the point that crying was the natural way to go, but still that was the response that came from my brain and my body. And that's it so far. You know, I'm taking the whole thing slowly, just always preaching patience, which is why I may not be showing drastic transformation on camera for a while. I'm telling myself to stay away from trans channels as well, because even though my journey is my own, it's far too easy to look at other people and want what they have. I'm not exactly young, and I do think a lot about the years I missed out on. The one thing I need to do is, I need to stock up on my wardrobe. I have so many men's clothes that I just have no interest in touching anymore, and you know, I like I like to dress in a more androgynous way as opposed to a typical femme way, but I just don't feel comfortable in straight cut jeans and a t-shirt anymore, so I've got some work to do there. That's all for this episode of the, uh, what am I calling it? The Transition Diaries? Okay, sure I guess. But hey, now it feels like I'm working the gears a bit. I'm talking about my transition, Ruby's coming back, and I'm close to upgrading my setup. It's exciting times, and I won't be sleeping on any of it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.